SpaceX is almost ready to start building a permanent human settlement on Mars with its massive Starship rocket. It's hard not to get the impression that Elon Musk has written off planet Earth. The entire purpose behind SpaceX is to develop a feasible, sustainable mode of interplanetary transportation that can take humans to extraterrestrial worlds in order to help start and maintain a working colony on Mars. But why did Musk choose Mars? Let's find out. Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notified every time we upload a new video. Creating a colony outside Earth is an audacious move. It's a laudable goal, and undoubtedly one most of the world can get behind. But it's one that gives you the feeling that Musk, the founder and CEO of SpaceX, has called it a day for Earth and decided we ought to set our eyes on redder pastures. And that sediment comes calcified by Musk's own words. I think there are really two fundamental paths, Musk has said. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. One path is we stay on Earth forever and then there will be some eventual extinction event. I do not have an immediate doomsday prophecy, but eventually history suggests there will be some doomsday event. There, there are really two fundamental paths. One path is we stay on Earth forever um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Uh, the alternative is to become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species. Essentially, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars because he wants to save humanity. He believes setting up a permanent outpost on a new world and ideally several other new worlds safeguards the species and ensures it will survive any calamity that might devastate Earth, whether it's an asteroid, killer robots, irreversible climate change, or some other unpredictable event. When it comes to raising the extinction arm, Musk is a broken record, and his words can stand in stark contrast to the things Earth Day is supposed to represent. The conservation of the planet's plants and animals, the protection of the environment from human influence and negative interference, the preservation of delicate ecosystems, and the celebration of the planet as a unique, rare place where life has evolved and thrived. Trying to build a new home on the Red Planet seems to suggest none of those things are worth pursuing. Furthermore, colonizing Mars requires us to radically change the Martian environment. We're going to stay on Mars for the long haul. We have to terraform it. We need to generate an atmosphere that's warm enough for liquid water to pool into lakes and oceans and is perhaps oxygenated so we can breathe on our own. To do this, we have to intentionally pump greenhouse gases into the air until we get things nice and toasty. Our bad actions become good again. I think we have a fighting chance of making that second Mars transfer window. Musk said in a discussion with Mars Society founder Robert Zubrin. That window Musk referred to as a launch opportunity that arises every 26 months for the mission of Mars. NASA, China, and the United Arab Emirates all launched missions to Mars in July 2020. The following window opens in 2022, with Musk referring to a 2024 Mars launch opportunity. The mission will launch to the Red Planet on a SpaceX Starship vehicle, a reusable rocket and spacecraft combo that is currently under development at the company's South Texas facility. SpaceX is also planning to use Starship for missions to the moon starting in 2022, as well as point-to-point -point trips around the Earth. Musk has long said that humans need to establish a permanent and self-sustaining presence on Mars to ensure the continuance of consciousness as we know it, just in case planet Earth is left uninhabitable by something like a nuclear war or an asteroid strike. But SpaceX doesn't have any plans to actually build a Mars base. As a transportation company, its only goal is to ferry cargo and humans to and from the Red Planet. It will take 1,000 spaceships and a million tons of vitamin C to make life on Mars sustainable, said Musk. Otherwise, you're going to die slowly and painfully. That's because in order to live on Mars, we need to have a self-sustaining city there. We need to have a self-sustaining city there, Musk recently told Ars Technica. But you want to do something much more ambitious with SpaceX. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, the long-term aspiration is to develop the technologies necessary to transport a large number of people and cargo to, to Mars um, in order to create a self-sustaining civilization there. And that's really why I started the company, was because it seemed to as though... Create, to create the possibility for life on other planets. Yeah. If there's a third world war, we want to make sure there's enough of a seed of human civilization somewhere else to bring it back and shorten the length of the Dark Ages, Musk said, responding to questions from his friend Jonah Nolan, the co-creator of the TV show Westworld. 
but it is not a fundamental species level risk, uh, whereas uh, digital superintelligence is. Uh, so it's really all about laying the groundwork to make sure that if, if humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. He also countered the suggestion that Mars might be some escape hatch for rich people by highlighting the risks of the mission. It will be like Shackleton's ad for Antarctic explorers. Difficult, dangerous, a good chance you'll die, excitement for those who survive. That kind of thing. There are not so many people who will want to go in the beginning, he said, adding that over time the Red Planet colony will be hospitable and have great bars. The Mars Bar. I love dad jokes. I'm a dad. <laughs> I think Mars should really have great bars. Um, the Mars bar. <laughs> Musk is a visionary, and he does know that colonizing the red planet will likely require a fleet of reusable spaceships, a vast investment of capital that may never be recouped, brave pioneers willing to die in the adventure, and eventually a resident population that feels like Mars is home. However, what Musk does not know is how his settlers will make money on Mars that he's spent back on Earth. His recent tweets show that he understands the daunting chicken and egg problem of establishing an extraterrestrial colony. Successful colonization on Earth has always benefited from precursors in some form before the modern era, meaning prior to 1500 AD, it always depended on the existence of life being already present. Settlers on Mars will have to bring everything but the minerals they mine with them. All of the labor, capital, and technology necessary to establish an economy to produce everything they will need, including atmosphere to breathe, will have to be hauled there 80 million miles from Earth. Sufficient numbers of people and large amounts of material will have to arrive roughly at the same time. Musk has promised to spend either all of his wealth except company stock or one half of his money to that end. Whether that would be enough is unclear, but it acknowledges that daunting problem. A minimally self-sustaining colony might mean a breeding population of 50 people living in a campus of underground tunnels, which sounds impressively claustrophobic on several levels. Musk, however, has talked about a city of one million living on the surface under glass domes, a scenario that has been dramatized in the book and series The Expanse. That would undoubtedly be more pleasant, but scaling up the population with housing less likely to induce affective disorders still does not solve two related problems of economic viability. Musk has come a long way since. Thanks to bets placed on SpaceX and Tesla then, saving both companies from dire straits, he now ranks among the wealthiest people in the world. But at the time, he had really achieved nothing with either company. He wasn't sending rockets into orbits nor selling cars. What he did have then was the same motivational gifts that he uses today to push his teams forward. The big thing Musk and SpaceX have today, as they seek to put the Starship program into overdrive, is resources. Musk is no longer scrambling to save SpaceX and Tesla. This time, SpaceX can afford to fail. And that's the price the company is willing to pay to go faster and further than anyone has gone before. If Musk's projections are correct, he is known for offering overly ambitious timelines. SpaceX's first Mars mission would launch in the same year that NASA astronauts returned to the moon under the Artemis program. SpaceX is also planning to fly space tourists on a Starship mission around the moon in 2023. NASA has also picked up SpaceX as one of the three commercial teams to develop moon leaders for the Artemis program. Going to Mars doesn't mean Earth becomes a distant memory, and all who stay behind are lost. Musk and others know that space travel has a great value for Earth and could be vital in saving the planet from destruction. It's wrong-headed to outline the way forward as a pair of discrete paths, but there's no question the values of Earth Day are not simply local to Earth. Their things will carry forward no matter where we go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out more videos on our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.